Um, okay, so the next topic we have, is, and this is get some facilitated discussion going with the council members. Um, make sure Bailey you take good notes and get some help from Danielle. What I'd like to do is just spend some time with you guys talking about now that we're done with the plan update. First off, Scott. Um, the way APD has typically laid this out for us is we can continue to provide meeting support um, on roughly a quarterly basis. But it's up to you guys. And I know you're a big um, advocate for you don't want to just have a meeting for the sake of having a meeting, right? So um, like to at least have that discussion, you know, what are y'all thinking from a council perspective? You know, do you want to try to target those, you know, still quarterly or, um, you know, two, three times a year? Is any kind of a tell me about um, what you'd like to target? Uh, to me personally, I, I, I think somewhere around three times a year. Okay. Um, just to try to keep things clean. Um, I don't like to have a meeting, just to have a meeting. I, I try to be respectful of people's time, but uh, we always have little items that come up and probably ought to discuss with the council, and it may not even be important to address them at that particular meeting, but maybe some similar to a C grant or something like that. And we like to get one of those a few, few meetings ahead of time and then review those well ahead of time when they have to be in. So, um, yeah, I mean, I would think somewhere around three times a year. Okay. Right. So probably not another one the end of, through the end of the calendar year, but yeah, sometime in the January, February time frame. Yeah, I would think so. Okay. I, I would, I would really like to refrain from trying to meet uh, any, any time that falls towards the end of the year. I mean, it's just hard to get things together. Everybody gets busy and gets traveling, holidays, and, yeah, um, football games. Stuff and just this time late, late in the year, just terrible truck. Kind of this okay. time of year seems to be pretty good. We used to have these in September, we start getting into late October, or November, December. That's four times that we You got one, one thing about it, more or less, in this to what we did today. Uh, we need to meet at least three times a year. Because things are happening so fast, yeah. and, and so much information is, is coming in, we've got to protect our we've got to protect our war. Well, it's one of those things too, Gray. That whenever whenever it's raining out, there's not there's not the, the hard issues, but just as soon as we go through another drought, there'll be things to talk about, and there'll be pressure points that we haven't talked about. So. Yeah, we basically we basically are dry out now. Yeah, yeah, we it's been dry up. It's okay. first it's first rain. It's supposed to rain today, yesterday, and tomorrow. That's the first rain we've had in months. Okay, so we'll loosely plan for three meetings next year, and we'll target you know that January February time frame. So I'll circle back with you, Scott, sometime in you know early to mid December, so we can start looking at dates and venues. Um, and then, so the follow-up to that is spend some time <clears throat> with you guys just kind of mapping out, you know, what we can structure some of these meetings around, get some input from the council. Um, so I'll come up with a few bulleted items here just to walk through each one in a discussion standpoint. Um, you know, one thing we've done I don't think we've done it with this particular council, but with some of the councils, there's been a desire to do some outreach in the interim years where you're not updating the plan and just getting out and inviting, you know, utility directors, public works directors, um, uh, elected officials to come in during a meeting and give them kind of an overview of the plan and, and you know, talk about try to build you know some understanding and some of that outreach because we know that most of you who are on the council are not the ones actually implementing the plan you're working with the technical team to develop the plan and you really rely on people like Jason is a good example right of, you know he's an implementing 
agency that does projects that are identified in the regional water plan. So that's something we could consider, <coughs> and we've done those a couple of different ways where we specifically, you know, find a place that's somewhat central to maybe two or three counties and, and then do some of that marketing outreach to try to get them to come in and have an agenda topic or two that walks through, hey, this is the regional water plan, this is what's in, in the information in there, these are our seed grants that are available, things like that. So that, that's one thing. And you, again, you could either do that <coughs> specific with a meeting where you just do some marketing and try to encourage other folks who maybe haven't come to the meetings in the past to come to the meeting. Or you could do it where it's just a one hour, you know, and whoever the local council member is for that area, come in and I'll help you obviously and just give a brief introduction to the plan and do it right in their backyard, whether it's a city council chamber or a, a you know, a rotary meeting or whatever you guys feel like. Um, you would want to do. So that's one option. And I'll just pause there and see if there's any discussion or desire to do anything like that. So I think we've had stakeholder meetings in the past. Uh, they were really good. Um, a couple of times we've gotten together with the uh, water professionals. Um, that might have been before your time. We met it, we actually met at their, uh, their association office, which is in Marietta, I think you can. Um, Anyway, uh, they've been good meetings. If we don't, if we get to hear from people, we normally don't get to hear from them because uh, when we go to like kind of about us, we might have a direct director from here. But to get all the directors together in the region hasn't happened in a long time. Uh, we did go out and quiz them, uh, made phone calls um, back when we did the first revision, I believe it was, to make sure that it just the uh, the quantities. Were correct, um, right. and it surprises me a little bit how uh, how I hate to use the word uh, the phrase out of touch, but how they really weren't um, informed about the water planning process, uh, which I understand. They get up, go to work, do their own thing, and then they they submit a permit to the EPD, and they either come back approved or not. But they don't really. Understand how all this other stuff came about and how much they could influence it. Um, so, I mean, I, I, I think it's a stakeholders meeting of some sort. Uh, and, and, and the last one we did was between all the councils, which was statewide, I think. That's the one we did in Dublin. Was that Dublin? It was somewhere in Georgia. But yeah, I, you know, I, that may be more of probably what we should do. Okay. Um, but you know, the, the faces change a lot. Um, newer generations only stay at a job a couple of years. And so, you know, the, the, the farther we go down, the less those folks are going to be exposed to the water council and the planning process. Um, that's just those are my thoughts on it. And I also think it was great for, for those stakeholders to hear from people like um, Liz and Right. You know, another thing we got, we got climate change, so we got to keep up with that. Right. Yeah, and that might come up on this next one is, um, before I go there, one other thought I had, Scott, just to mention it, because Danielle's on too, is Another thought there is if we do get around to getting some reappointments or appoint, you know, new appointments, we do have. If. Yeah, hopefully. If we don't, everybody's going to die off. Hopefully that will happen. You know, I know. If we're all going to die off. Jennifer says that she doesn't control what the appointing officials do, but there are definitely efforts to try to encourage them to get that done. But we do have new member orientation as, a, as something, you know, if we get to that point. Um, and we could maybe do that jointly together, like say, pick a location central to Altamaha and Swansea and bring, you know, some of the existing members in with some of the new members and just, you know, help build that rapport and start getting those guys, you know, guys and girls up to speed if they're new appointments. Yeah, I'd certainly like to see it. It's one of those deals you kind of go into where, you know, there's members on here and has been here since the beginning and they, they're going to have information that folks in 
Yeah, and one of the frustrations Ed had, I think, which is to, it was a timing thing more than anything. He's the chair for Altamaha. He, he kind of didn't feel like it was really fair to some of those new members to be charged with kind of signing off on an updated plan where they really weren't a part of, like, you know, knowing what went into it and the technical work and the presentations that were given. So, um, yeah, we can we can try to coordinate that, assuming we get some uh, new appointments. Well, we've seen a lot of information over the last 10 years that, that when these updates come, our updates to the information that somebody had, some of that stuff that we updated the other day, we haven't thought about in five years. So if somebody who had come on in the last five years would have, would have actually been signed off on something that they never had any, any information. Right. Okay. Um, so the next one I have there is just inviting in technical experts on any topics of interest, or we could pull together a panel discussion if there's if there's anything that would interest you guys in that. I mean, maybe great, you know, getting an update from a few experts who have been looking at you know climate change and how that impacts water supply and um, you know, temperatures and water quality and all that. So that, that could be something we could explore. Um, anything else on that line? Any other technical topics of interest? Or expert panels, any thoughts there? Or I'm just trying to think, you know, what did this council kind of like wrestle with in this last plan update? I think that um, the uh, the beam modeling was a big, you know, that was probably one of the bigger changes. And just looking at some of those results, we still have that. <clears throat> we never really closed the loop, John. Working with you in that um, alternative metric that Dr. Zane could do as far as the um, the um, access to the river. Remember, he has the ability to look at those areas and define how many river days you could have and things like that. So I think that's a topic out there that um, we could follow up with way on. And one of the things that surprised me in that work session is I was only focused on the low flows and how that would impact accessibility to the river. And John, you brought up the fact that Sometimes in the really high flows, it creates a safety issue. Mm -hmm. So knowing that and, and you know, having, but this was something that the B model could do that the previous modeling platform could not. I know you guys gave us some information. And um, so that's a topic I think we could bring back at a future meeting and work with Dr. Zane to give us some results on that. All right, anything else on that, that line item? No. One thing we don't focus on a whole lot is the shift that EPD made from water quantity to water quality. Uh, it, that just kind of leads its way into the discussion. Um, so that aspect needs to be, be retro and folks understand why some of the terminology that we use now is not, especially in the updates, some of the terminology is not relevant. Right. Yeah, and I did feel like, um, you know, Dr. Booth, in her presentations, you know, talked a lot about not only what the existing conditions were, but some foreshadowing of some issues that she knows she's going to tackle and would be coming. So maybe bring her in and getting an update from her could be one of those topics, too. Okay. Um, I don't know, this, I, you know, this, I'm pulling this from work sessions we've done with other councils. I don't know if there's any facility tours um, in our neck of the woods that folks would be interested in. I know, you know, in the coastal region, they're thinking about going and seeing that crazy dissolved oxygen factory that they built on the river that brings the water in and oxygenates it and put it back. So they're going to go um, try to work with the port and do a visit there. But any, Maybe facilities or industries. Um, one thing Dr. Hawkins, you know, we talked about earlier, Grady, there's 
a lot of really cool stuff that goes on up in Tifton at the research center there with the University of Georgia. So if there's some interest to go up there and maybe learn about some of the state of the art with um, irrigation, you know, we've all heard about fertigation and precision irrigation and things like that. We could maybe work with them to get up there and just, you know, get a classroom setting overview of what's going on and then maybe get out in, the, in their, you know, their field setting. And so if, if, if you want to do something like that, we could organize that. I don't know, any other thoughts? Well, facility tours. All right, um, local or regional conferences to target. Um, and then there's a few that we typically like to, you know, try to do. Um, the big one is in July, which is the um, GAWP has a conference in Savannah. Um, occasionally, they put together a panel of different. Um, <coughs> Water council members to come in and just you know again do like a facilitated Q and A. Um, but I don't know if there's any local or regional conferences that you guys would want to target. Again, maybe from an outreach perspective. That's I mean, Cliff, are there any water related conferences in Valdosta or Tipton area that come through occasionally? Or the Georgia Bar Conference. Right. What about rural water, Georgia rural water? We've always talked about that. Do they come come down and run it? They don't down here too much. I think most of their stuff's up in Florida. It's about the ball line. Really? Uh, What's the other one? <coughs> yeah. I wonder if it was GMA or one of those other type of organizations usually has a water track. I don't know. Is it GMA? Yeah, GMA does. That's a good one. Yeah, it's just like looking, you know, maybe they have something coming up in July of next year or September and, you know, we could plan a meeting around it and get, you know, some cross-pollination potentially. Okay. So you got GWI. Which one is that? The Water Waste Water Institute. Oh, that'd be good. Where is that usually? I'm trying to think. Well, it's not just in Georgia. Okay, so we came up with GMA. This one. <coughs> Council members from here to come down, coordinate with you to visit with your group, and then you know maybe time it up with one of your governing board meetings. Just to, I'm assuming we could be an audience in the yeah. The public is always welcome all the time. If we wanted to do something special or specific or have some sort of activity that's, that's specific to this, then yeah, we would be pre planning. But everybody's always invited to attend those meetings. Okay, so you know. Whatever your pleasure would be there, Scott and Cliff. You know, it sounds like if it's just a regular government board meeting, we could show up almost unannounced, it sounds like. But if you wanted to do something special, what's we'll the see. schedule on those, Abby? So, other than this past month with the budget adoption, if the schedule gets a little bit distorted for that month, but otherwise, it's the second Tuesday of the month, and it's during the day, um, and it's all but one or two months of the year, it would be in five oak at the at the district office. Sometimes they try to do something else on off site at somewhere within the Swanee district periodically. I'm not aware of when the next off site is, so it's it's pretty pretty safe to presume. And there is notice that you can sign up to get the noticing for that because the board packet would come out in advance and it would really include the locations to be known in advance. 
but yeah, you're always welcome to attend. There is an online option where you can listen in also. If you just want to hear what, what kind of gets transacted at them, then you can listen in online as well. Okay, so we can coordinate on that and um, follow up with things. Um, you're still looking at it, Jason? Yeah, I'm still. Looks like they got a, more, a lot of webinars than they do. Okay. They got a laboratory analyst and all that type of stuff. <laughs> um, any other suggestions? Again, under this kind of, uh, you know, trying to avoid just having a meeting for the sake of having a meeting, bringing pertinent content. Um, and you know, anticipating is there any work that you know you guys want done before we? Because before you know it, there'll be time to start thinking about updating the plan. I know you know we got a couple of two, three years here, but that's the intent of this exercise is to kind of map some things out and let you know get some feedback from from you guys. Um, you can all you know you may be driving back later today and something comes to your mind, just send me an email and um, I'll work I'll work with Scott. You know. To get them set up. Okay. Um, anything else on that, Scott? Or I think where we landed in summary is, you know, we'll probably target three meetings a year, and um, you know, Lucy, right now, sometime in that, you know, probably the later part of January or early February for that first meeting next year, and we'll start that planning sometime in early December. Public comments and local, local 